Have you ever heard a random fact that just sticks with you, popping into your head at the most inconvenient times? Like during dinner with the in-laws or that awkward Christmas party at work? Well, today's your lucky day because I've got a whole batch of those coming your way. From the surprisingly and weirdly sexy power of the I Voted sticker to the future of perfume, trust me, you're not ready for this one, and a slippery world record that's weirder than it sounds, this list is full of head-shaking moments. Get ready to learn some seriously strange new stuff, because I'm Mike with List25, and here are 25 random facts to annoy your friends. 25. The MacGuffin Alfred Hitchcock invented the term MacGuffin to describe an object or event that drives the plot, but doesn't actually matter all that much. It's what gets the story moving. In The Birds, the birds are the MacGuffin, and in Psycho, it's Norman Bates' mother. Other famous examples include the suitcase in Pulp Fiction, the ring in Lord of the Rings, and Private Ryan in, well, saving Private Ryan. But the funniest MacGuffin of all has to be Doug from The Hangover. While the movie focuses on the chaos, the whole plot revolves around finding Doug. He's getting married, and his bachelor party is what sends the guys to Vegas in the first place. He's barely in the movie, but without him, the movie wouldn't exist. Five Days of Birds so, now that I've brought up the birds, let's talk about something that's not so flattering. While he's one of the most respected filmmakers ever, his relationships with his female stars weren't exactly friendly. And none more so than with Tippi Hedren. As the star of the film, Hedren spent a ton of time with Hitchcock. And let's just say they didn't exactly hit it off. Tensions boiled over during that infamous scene where her character gets attacked by birds that have broken through the roof. Hitchcock, being Hitchcock, was determined to make it as real as possible, so he insisted on using live birds. For five days straight, Hedron was pelted with birds of all kinds. I mean, can you even imagine? The scene is only a minute long, but it's become a textbook example of what we see as iconic. However, it's hard to say Hedron's emotional and physical toll was worth it. 23. The Unexpected Sexy Superpower of the I Voted Sticker no matter who you are, your gender, sexuality, political views, or religion, there are objects out there that will, whether you realize it or not, make your brain think about sex. This is known as arousal, or let's just call it getting turned on. Now, I know what you're thinking. What does this have to do with the I Voted sticker? Well, hear me out. According to research, every election day, that sticker becomes a weirdly powerful thing. Apparently, there's something about seeing that sticker on someone that gets the brain buzzing. Scientists say it's not about politics, it's about the message it sends. Here's someone who cares enough about their community to vote. It's a desirable trait. And yes, your brain might just turn that into something else entirely. And who's judging? We're all human. 22. The sport you didn't know you needed. Are you tired of the usual sports? How about trying something a little more unconventional? We've all seen the rise of oddball sports like stick horse dressage and face slapping, but if that's a bit too intense for you, maybe toe wrestling is more your style. The rules are pretty simple. Two opponents link their toes and battle to pin each other's foot down for three seconds. Whoever manages to hold their opponent's foot to the ground wins. Easy, right? Believe it or not, this sport has a dedicated fan base, and there's even an annual world championship in the UK. Best of all, you don't need any special equipment or training. Just a foot and a willingness to get a little up close and personal. 21. Rocky Mountain Oysters You ready to dive into a hot plate of Rocky Mountain Oysters? Well, you've got guts. And by the way, I know a bull out there who's missing a few things. For those not in the know, Rocky Mountain Oysters are deep-fried bull testicles. Yep, I know. Popular in western states like Colorado, Texas, and Wyoming, these breaded and fried Delicacies are said to taste like chicken, calamari, or even clams, depending on who you ask. The real taste? Well, that's all in the preparation. Sure, it takes a certain type of person to order bull testicles along with their burger and fries, but hey, as the saying goes, when in Rome. Or in this case, the, the Rockies. 20. Infant foreskins and burn treatments. Fibroblast cells from infant foreskin might sound strange, but they're actually helping burn victims heal faster. What makes these cells so powerful is that they're much better at producing collagen than cells from adult skin. Since infant skin is still growing and developing, it has a lot more robust ability to heal and repair itself. Of course, the use of infant foreskin in medicine raises some eyebrows, 
but it's worth mentioning that the cells are donated by parents who've consented and chosen circumcision. Despite the controversy, this treatment is making a real difference, helping burn victims recover more quickly and with fewer complications. 19. The Future of Perfume Forget pumpkin spice. Apparently, what every girl really wants to smell like is a dirty vagina. Well, oh, at least that's the bold claim made by one perfume company, Vulva Original. This fragrance is marketed as capturing the scent of femininity, blending vaginal scent, body odor, and a hint of perfume notes. And here's the weird bit. It's pitched as an aphrodisiac for the modern generation, suggesting that smelling like a vulva is the new key to igniting desire and well-being. Before you get too weirded out, the company assures us that it's all made under strict international guidelines with a little help from female volunteers. Because why not? 18. The job you didn't know you wanted. Looking for a job on water? Being a gondolier might be just exactly what you've been looking for. It's one of Italy's most coveted jobs. I mean, you get to navigate the iconic canals of Venice and earn a pretty impressive salary while doing it. Some gondoliers rake in up to $150,000 a year. First, you need to find an experienced mentor, then put in 400 hours of training before you can sit for the exam. And you should know that it's been a male-dominated profession, with only one woman, Giorgia Boscolo, officially earning the title of gondolera in 2010. The training also covers languages, Venice's culture, and the history of the canals. So, what are you waiting for? 17. Oxford may be old, but it's not the oldest. Oxford is famous for being the oldest university in the world, right? I mean, it's one of the main draws for students from all over the globe, especially those from prestigious families. After all, studying at the place where it all started feels like the ultimate academic achievement. Except it's not true. Oxford is actually the second oldest university in the world. The oldest? The University of Bologna in Italy. Not as well known, but definitely deserving of the title. Bologna was also the first to use the word universitas to refer to its students and teachers, making it the true pioneer of higher education. And real quick guys, if you're enjoying this video and you want to help me out, please give it a like and comment down below. It really helps the algorithm, which in turn helps the channel a lot. So thank you guys so much. I do my best to read and reply to all of them. So that is me. I am, I am doing that. It's one of my favorite things to do, actually. <laughs> read y'all's comments. Some of them. Some of you guys are mean. <laughs> 16. The origins of sex on the beach. The origins of the sex on the beach drink? Ironclad. Its goofy name, along with hurricanes and alligators, can all be traced back to one place. Florida. Specifically, a bar called Confetti's, and a bartender by the name of Ted Pizzio. Ted was on a mission to sell the most peach schnapps in the area, and his solution was to create a unique cocktail that would get people's attention. And he succeeded. As for the name, Ted thought it was the perfect fit, inspired by two things he believed drew tours to Florida for spring break. Sex and the beach. Or maybe a combination of the two. Now, I can't say for sure that's exactly how it went down, but, I mean, this is my home state of Florida we're talking about, so, yeah, it checks out. 15. A futuristic Wi-Fi router on wheels. In 2021, one of the strangest cars ever made was auctioned off for a cool $111,111. The low-res car, a vehicle that looks more like a high-end Wi-Fi router than something you'd drive down the street, was created by footwear brand United Nude and designed by Rem D. Kulhas, nephew of architect Rem Kulhas. The bizarre vehicle is basically a low-resolution version of the iconic Lamborghini Countach, and it appeared in art exhibits and music videos. So, it's more like sculptural art than an actual car. It's not exactly a speed demon either. With a top speed of 31 miles per hour or 50 kilometers an hour, it's not built for daily driving, and it's definitely not street legal. So, you won't see it at any dealerships, but it might just pop up at a museum or art gallery near you. 14. A shocking bet. We all know sports fans can be a little intense, but John and Nicole Grant? Well, they took it to a whole new level. John's a Chicago Bears fan, and Nicole roots for the Green Bay Packers, two teams with one of the NFL's biggest rivalries, Go Bucks. In 2014, when the teams faced off, this couple made a very interesting wager. The loser would do the dishes? Too tame. Rub the winner's feet? Guess again. They agreed that the winner would taser the loser. Yep, taser. I'm guessing alcohol might have been involved. 
The Bears won. Well, that's, that can't be right. <laughs> and John was ready to collect on his bet. But Nicole, not exactly thrilled about the whole thing, called the cops. John ended up arrested and charged with felony possession of an electric weapon. After that, their next bet was a little less shocking. Literally. The loser just had to wear the other team's jersey and John ended up in Packers gear. Again, go Bucks. I believe it's the Buccaneers who have won the Super Bowl more recently than the Packers and the Bears. <laughs> 13. The Philosopher Who Died in Cow Dung Heraclitus was one of those philosophers who really made you think, influencing big names like Plato and Aristotle with his ideas about change and the constant flow of life. But sadly, after today, you might remember him more for his strange death than his groundbreaking ideas. According to Diogenes Laertius, Heraclitus died in 745 BCE in one of the weirdest ways imaginable. He developed dropsy, a condition where your body swells up with fluid and thought the best way to fix it was by sitting in a hot, steamy place. So what did he do? He buried himself in cow dung, hoping it would help. Uh, spoiler, it didn't. Unable to get himself out, he ended up dying, proving that sometimes even the wisest minds make questionable decisions. 12. We built an insufferable robot. Fans of Douglas Adams might remember Marvin, the depressed robot from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But what if Marvin had a little more sass and a lot less gloom? Scientists at Augsburg University named their creation Irony Man and designed him to be less stiff and more relatable than your average AI. Instead of speaking in the usual monotone, Irony Man mimics human speech patterns. So when someone says, traffic is frustrating, he'll snap back with, I love being stuck here, putting a sarcastic twist on the word love. The creators thought it would make him more relatable and easier to interact with. And they were right. Students absolutely loved him. Still, he's got a bit of a tact problem as he doesn't always know when to dial down the sarcasm. 11. Crime clearly does pay. Okay. I'm not saying you should get into crime, but anyone who says it doesn't pay clearly hasn't heard of Pablo Escobar. The guy didn't just lead the Medellin cartel, he became a legend known as Don Pablo, El Padrino, and El Zara de la Cocaina. His cartel supplied 80% of the cocaine in the US. Escobar's wealth wasn't just impressive, it was insane. He spent $2,500 a month on rubber bands for his cash didn't care about losing two billion, paid pilots 500,000 for a single trip, and even set fire to two million just to keep his daughter warm. And here's the kicker. Millions of his dollars are still hidden somewhere in the world. His wealth was split into four categories. Obvious assets, hidden cash, laundered money in foreign banks, and lost assets. The Colombian government found $100 million worth of gold, cash, and jewels. But former DEA agents say there's still over 1.3 billion buried somewhere in Colombia, known only to his cartel members and the late Escobar himself. 10. The Crazy Billion Yuan Dowry Okay, I know you're picturing a lot of zeros right now. So let me tell you about Wu Rubiao, a Chinese kitchen and tile magnate who grabbed the headlines in 2012 when he gave his daughter a dowry worth more than 1 billion yuan. 156.37 million dollars for her wedding. Some called it self-publicity, but honestly, who cares? It was wild. The dowry wasn't just cash though. It came with four boxes of gold, a Porsche, a Mercedes Benz, and wait for it, five million shares in Wu's company, Wanli, valued at around $15 million. The bride, who kept her name under wraps, married her childhood sweetheart after an eight-day wedding banquet. So, to all the dads watching this, well, you might want to step it up. 9. The movie filmed in space The space race was one of the most defining events of the Cold War, as the US and Russia fought tooth and nail to be the first to put a man on the moon. The US may have won that round, but Russia has never stopped trying to outdo them. While many of Russia's space missions have been underfunded and poorly executed, one is definitely standing out. Russian director Klim Shipanko's 2023 film The Challenge was actually filmed in space. The movie, which stars surgeon Yulia Peresild as she's sent to the International Space Station to save a cosmonaut, was shot during a 12-day mission in 2021. Shipanko himself joined Peresild in orbit to film scenes aboard the ISS. Whether the movie is any good or not, the challenge made history as the first film ever shot in space, beating a similar project by Tom Cruise and Elon Musk. 
which is short for elongated muskrat. Bet she didn't know that. <laughs> Eight, big mouth Billy Bass. Do you remember that talking fish that practically everyone seemed to have on their wall at some point? Yep, it was called the big mouth Billy Bass. About 25 years ago, this weird wall mounted fish was a must have. With the press of a button, it would sing, take me to the river and don't worry, be happy, all while swiveling its head to face you. Joe Pelletieri, who worked in product development, got a nudge from his wife that inspired him to create it. He teamed up with engineers, and the fish quickly became a massive hit, supposedly raking in over $100 million for the company. So if you're looking for a career pivot that doesn't involve bank heists, drug cartels, or fairy tale weddings with massive dowries, maybe a singing fish business is the way to go. 7. The Ultimate Cutting Edge We all know the saying, when all you have is a chainsaw, everything looks like a steak. Okay, maybe that's not a real saying, but it seems some people have taken the term cutting edge a bit too literally. In a world where kitchen knives are just too basic, some chainsaw enthusiasts have decided to tackle their meat prep with, you guessed it, a chainsaw. Precision might not be their strong suit, but there's something oddly satisfying about watching someone hack through a T-bone with a tool meant for cutting down trees. And these chainsaw aficionados don't stop at steaks. They've also gone after briskets, roasts, and even animal quartering. And everyone knows that Malcolm solves his problems with the chainsaw. And he never has the same problem twice. More references. Do I like sneaking these references in? I do. Six, the world record rejected, then accepted. Richard Plout, a Frenchman with big dreams, set out to build the world's tallest Eiffel Tower model made entirely out of matchsticks. After eight years of hard work and 50 pounds or 23 kilograms of glue, he finally finished the impressive 23 foot or seven meter structure in 2023, right on the 100th anniversary of Gustav Eiffel's death. But there was one little problem, the matches. Plowd had bought his matches directly from the manufacturer who sold them without the red sulfur tips. According to Guinness, only quote, commercially available matches were allowed. So despite the sheer effort and over 700,000 matches, the record was rejected. I mean, can you imagine the disappointment? Luckily, someone at Guinness had a change of heart. Just one day later, they reversed their decision and congratulated Plowd for setting a new world record. Five, a slippery achievement. Since I'm talking about world records, let me tell you about one of the most pointless ones we've ever come across. Imagine you're on a casual walk and come across a pole. But wait, this isn't just any pole, it's greased. And if you don't cross it, you're stuck. Pfft, happens to you all the time, right? Well, there's actually a world record for crossing a greased pole faster than anyone else. And in 2016, Antonio Papa claimed it. Papa from Italy zipped across that slippery pole in just 3.09 seconds, beating the previous world record set by Joe Da Silva in 2012 on Guinness World Records Gone Wild. So there's a new Papa in town and he's got a slick record to prove it. Four the bloody mistake that made A Nightmare on Elm Street scarier. In 1984's A Nightmare on Elm Street, Johnny Depp's character Glenn gets sucked into his bed by Freddy Krueger, and then BAM! A huge geyser of blood sprays all over the ceiling. It's one of the most memorable moments in horror, and believe it or not, it happened because of a mistake. To make the scene, the filmmakers used a rotating room. Everything in the room was nailed down. Then, they flipped the whole thing upside down. They poured 220 gallons of fake blood, a mix of water, red food coloring, and poster paint to thicken it, through a hole in the bed. But of course, things didn't go exactly as planned. When the blood hit the ceiling light, it became electrified and shocked the guy pouring it. He was fine, thankfully. And since the budget was tight, the crew had to manually rotate the room instead of using a motor. As the blood sloshed around, they lost control, and the room started spinning unexpectedly. It wasn't part of the plan, but honestly, it made the scene even creepier than if everything had gone according to script. Three, the motorized ice cream cone. Human creativity has given us some incredible inventions, but sometimes it also leads to downright absurd ones, like the motorized ice cream cone designed to rotate your ice cream for you. Yeah, because turning it by hand was just way too much effort. I don't know if it's just me, but eating ice cream is one of those simple joys that doesn't need a motor, right? The device adds unnecessary bulk, needs batteries, and honestly, complicates a pleasure that's meant to be easy. Plus, all those disposable batteries, not great for the environment. 
It's a classic example of over-engineering for a problem that didn't even exist in the first place. Two, skyscrapers, but underground. Have you ever thought about what our world would look like if we decided to build down instead of up? Well, we might just be entering the time of earth scrapers, massive underground buildings that go against the typical skyscraper. In Mexico City, where new buildings in the historic center are limited to just eight floors, BNKR Arquitectura has proposed a 65-story earth scraper beneath the city's central square. The design was an inverted pyramid with a hollow center to allow light and air for parks and floors below. The top would be covered in glass to keep a connection to the surface city above. Meanwhile, experts from Washington University in St. Louis have also envisioned a 274 meter deep earth scraper building in Arizona's abandoned Lavender Pit Mine. The concept includes homes, offices, and workspaces, with the dome and skylights to blend with the natural landscape. Both projects have remained ideas thus far, with no real-world construction underway yet, but who knows? Maybe the future of architecture is below the surface. One when your name defines your destiny. Here's a fun thought. What if your name actually determined your destiny? It's called nominative determinism, the idea that we end up in careers that match our names. I mean, spare me a second while I run down this list for you. There's Tito Beveridge, the guy behind one of the biggest vodka brands in America. Then there's Ed Curry, the man who made the world's hottest peppers. And of course, Usain Bolt. I mean, come on, he was born to be the fastest man on earth. But the best one, Dr. Willard Bliss. Born in 1825, his first name was Doctor. His parents pretty much set him up for a medical career from the get-go. And sure enough, he became a doctor. But then Dr. Bliss ended up being tied to the assassination of President James Garfield. When Garfield was shot in 1881, Dr. Bliss was one of the first to tend to him. But Bliss was really into homeopathic medicine and thought washing hands or using antiseptics was unnecessary. So when he dug around in Garfield's wound with dirty tools, it caused an infection and Garfield died from it. So while the Bliss part probably sounded great, it definitely wasn't the most fitting name for Garfield's doctor after all. And that's a wrap. Normally I direct you to one of our other videos on the end screen here, but guess what? We just launched a brand new channel called Dark Roast Detectives where I deep dive into the most fascinating true crime stories. So if you're into that or you know someone who is, it would seriously mean a lot if you could check it out by clicking on this link right here. And if you prefer to stick around here as always, I will catch you next time. See you soon.